Hello and welcome back to Foos Entertainment, this time for my review of 1982's The Return of the Jedi, also known as Star Wars Episode 6, The Return of the Jedi. This was originally the final episode of Star Wars until um, they made a Force Awakens much, many, many, many years later. Um, this one has always been a mixed opinion with me. Now, uh, 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 let me explain. Uh, what made The Empire Strikes Back so great, like I said when I reviewed that movie, is that there's just a bit of gothicness over everything that really balances everything out in a very good way of good and dark, with a neutral balance, but at the same time being gothic. And that really played out quite well for me. It's also why it's my favorite one of the series. This one, on the other hand, they tried so hard to kind of combine Episode 4, New Hope, and Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back, into this movie, Episode 6, The Return of the Jedi. And um, in a way it works, yes, but at times it does not work. At times it seems a bit commercial, but with that said, is this among some, one of my favorite films in the series? Yes, it is. Which is why I don't actually hate on this movie. There's really only two Star Wars films which I have made very open up to this point that I have a problem with. That be Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, and Episode 4, A New Hope. This film I not really have much of a problem with. I just have mixed feelings about it. I kind of got through all that. I can say that um, definitely quite a journey making it up to this point. And they never made any new episodes. This would have been the last one, but they did make more. So I'm happy for that, though, because it makes it for a much bigger franchise. Because it's competition, which I will get, get into, um, obviously starting likely tomorrow or Tuesday, which is Star Trek. I've always had more films than, than this franchise. Star Wars did. So I'm glad it got more movies after this. Well, let's go into the premise of the film. The synapsis, as it were. This film takes place, um, I say roughly just a few months, perhaps only a few weeks after the events of The Empire Strikes Back although the film was made two years later. It actually takes place only weeks after the last film. Um, Solo is being held on um, Luke and Inga Skywalker's home planet of Tatooine by Jabba the Hutt. Hell fast over there as well, the Valley Hunter. That we are familiar with from all the other episodes. And he pretty much has Solo still encaved in carbonite and still frozen in expand, expended animation. And basically, um, Luke, Leia, and Lando, Chewbacca, with the help of C. Prepio and R2 D2 plan a rescue attempt to rescue Solo from the hands of Jabba the Hutt. They are successful. They get caught, they get caught and captured, yes, but they are successful. They kill Jabba the Hutt, um, title fat, and this time for real, because there's no clones to take us place this time, does me his demise. And the story on that one, I have a next event. Um, Yoda dies after telling Luke what he has to do to be a Jedi. He has to confront his father, Darth Vader, one more time and defeat him. I've always been kind of curious, did Yoda know that, um, that Anakin Skywalker was still in there somewhere and that he would uh, do what he originally was foreseen and prophesied to do as far back as the Phantom Menace? 
take out the emperor and re and destroy the Sith? Did he know? That is, that's, that's the thing that's never ever been um, answered. It's always been a speculation to me. Is did Yoda actually know that um, Anakin Skywalker would indeed actually save his son from the Emperor and destroy the Emperor? Did he actually know that? It's very interesting. But yeah, Yoda dies. Luke figures out what he has to do. Finds out that Leia is his sister. Twin sister. And we discover that there's a new Death Star being made. And uh, our heroes go on a mission to take out a the deflector shield that protects the Death Star that they cannot get through. Kind of similar, kind of similar to doing something from Rogue One, <laughs> Star Wars story. Although the film was made years and years and years and years, and years, and years later. Um, <coughs> so on the on the moon next to this big planet, um, Solo, Luke, Leia, Proprio, and R2D2 find themselves um, captured by the planets, the uh, moon's inhabitants. Not the planet, because it actually is on the moon. The moon's inhabitants, which are actually a f furry, bear-like, cute, cuddly creature known as an Ewok. And um, they actually think that she prepules to God and deity. And so they help out our band of heroes to take out the, the ground forces and pretty much deactivate the shield. Meanwhile, up around it, Near the near the new um, incomplete Death Star, which they think is incomplete, that actually turns out to be complete. Um, Lando is leading a strike force against Death Star to destroy it. The Emperor is actually on the Death Star with Vader. Luke, knowing what he has to do. Moves himself from the equation on the moon and goes and allows himself to be captured by his father so that he can confront his father. But his main motivation is to try to turn his father back to the good side because he senses the conflict of being good and evil. The man who once was his father, Angus Skywalker, in the evil that has taken over, which is Darth Vader, is the way he sees it. There's a conflict between them. And he's, re he's reluctant to kill his father. When he refuses to do so, after um, capitalizing over Vader, the Emperor says, if you want to kill Vader, I will destroy you. And he tries to do it with his first powers that we're all familiar with, lightning coming out of his hands and all that. Vader's pretty much no more at this point. It's really this Anakin in there. And Anakin pretty much is like, no. And pretty much takes the Emperor and throws him to his death. But in the process, sacrifices himself for his son. And then we get to see um, the reveal of Anakin Skywalker without um, the mask on him. And he dies. And of course, um, Solo and our band of heroes do destroy the, the deflector shield, and Lando with his um, armed force in the, above the moon takes out the Death Star. Then, this is actually the end of the Empire. The Empire is destroyed. So what took six movies to do is finally done. The Federation was destroyed and Revenge of the Sith then the Empire rose, and now the Empire is gone, and taken out of the equation by the end of this one. Now, what we don't really realize is that this is based off of uh, the sixth novel by George Lucas and company, and the novel is not called The Return of the Jedi. It's called The Revenge of the Jedi. But they thought that the title The Revenge of the Jedi would actually 
throw people off due to the events of Empire Strikes Back, and thought it would be too much of a sinister title for Star Wars. So they decided at the last minute to call it The Return of the Jedi. The same thing kind of happened with 1989's License to Kill in the James Bond franchise. The original title for that story was License Revoked, but people thought that no one would know what that meant, so they called it License to Kill instead. It's kind of the same, same thing when it comes to that. Um, picture and audio quality. This one um, tends to, uh, in darker scenes in the movie, tends to be more warm, cooler temperatures instead of cool, cooler temperatures. So, but in, in, in light, bright areas of the movie, though, it tends to go back and forth between neutral and cool, cooler temp temperatures. So it's all in all, it's a very good looking movie. But you can't really decide what his main base cutter template is going to actually be throughout the movie. I kind of like that because um, A New Hope, it was pretty decided that they wanted to go with a warm cutter template with Empire Strikes Back. It was pretty obvious he went with a cool cutter template. But this one, they kind of have both. It's like they can't really decide. And I think that's kind of cool. It kind of goes to that whole mixed um, ideology of this movie, of making it a, a um, light, more positive movie, but at the same time keeping it a dark and grim and sinister movie at the same time. And um, I say the cinematography and the videotography of the film kind of play into that. Like all their films, this film has no grain in it. It really looks really, really good. and has um, superior quality. Audio. Compared to A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, this is going to shock you. There are certain points in the movie to where all of the sound is in front of you and not around you. As much as A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. But then, for all of the dramatic scenes in the movie, instead of mid-scenes, but more dramatic scenes, it's all around you. So, it goes back and forth being just as good as A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. And then at times, not as good as Empire in A New Hope. So, but overall, very good sound track. And keep in mind that the original Star Wars trilogy was made from 1977 to 1982. So these films back then wouldn't sound anything like they do now. And this, these sound remixes are very, very good. As opposed to the original three... Uh, you know, the the, the uh, prequel trilogy, I call it original trilogy because I watch these in order, of course, but I'll call it the prequel trilogy because that's what everybody knows them as. Those films were preceded with the sound that you actually hear on the Blu-ray when you watch them. So, they're not remixes, they're just authentic. <laughs> when it comes down to uh, the original trilogy from 1977-1982, um, they were preceded with Dolby Stereo capabilities in theaters, they were not preceded with a 5.1 or higher channeled audio. In the course of the original trilogy in this set, set as well as the prequel trilogy, is in 6.1 channeled audio. So, um, yeah, definitely lots of good sound in these movies. Well, it's been a pleasure watching these six films. Now, the next two are going to be quite good. Um, a lot of people have a lot of bad things to say about the next two movies. I'm not one of them. I actually really enjoyed the new trilogy as we have had it so far. I am very curious to see what they're going to do with um, episode 9. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. We still got to watch episode 7, The Force Awakens, and episode 8, The Last Jedi. And I will see you guys next time for my review review of Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, which I will be watching in 3D. And I'll tell you all about it when I watch that film, which I'll be watching next. So I'll see you guys soon. Until then.